Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Well, this is quite the gospel text we've got here before us this morning. We've got nations rising up against nations, false prophets, pestilence, persecution, and death and suffering. Not exactly heartwarming, and in fact, it's quite dismal sounding. And it sounds a lot like the world we live in today. Nation will rise up against nation. So soon after Remembrance Day, I can't help but to think about the war and violence that continually rages in the Middle East and in so many places where soldiers fight. Famine, pestilence, terrors, and great signs from heaven. Well, turn on the internet or the news, and what do you see? I see suicide bombers, starvation, great storms, hurricanes, disease. So much of what our Lord says in our text today sounds familiar, doesn't it? And the text gets gloomier, too. Jesus goes on to predict the destruction of the Jewish temple and the fall of Jerusalem. And then finally, a little later in verse 27, which we did not hear, but I want you to read it for yourselves. Jesus tells us that the coming of the Son of Man will be in a cloud of power and great glory. And he says, straighten up. Raise up your heads because redemption is drawing near. And some Christians are convinced that these kind of biblical texts predict events in our own times. And they say, with all confidence, the end is nigh. Surely these are the end times and the end times that the Lord tells us about. We've got war and famine, disease and pestilence, hunger and violence all around us. And you know, these people may well be right. It may well be the end times. I can't say that it isn't. How would I know? And it's awfully tempting then to sit and with this notion and to sit and stew on biblical texts like we've just read and then to preach gloom and doom. But I want to ask you this morning, what did Jesus say in this passage about those who come in his name saying that the time is at hand in verse 8? Boy, if you knew that I was going to have a quiz this early in the morning, you would have studied up, eh? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you. Jesus said, don't believe them. Do not go after them. Do not be led astray. And I'll tell you why. To focus on calamities, as some do, to focus on the end times, to focus on second-guessing the second coming, is to get caught up with the wrong things, and it leads to anxiety, and it leads to fear, and fear, my friends, is not the faith, love, and hope we should have as Catholics. Those Christians who overemphasize the end times very often prey on fear, and they are leading people astray. Did you know that our Lord essentially says that everything will turn out fine, even if it doesn't look like it, maybe most especially when it doesn't look like it. He says that everything will be reconciled unto himself. So with that in mind, really and truly, what on earth do we have to worry about? Because all of the big things then are taken care of. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that everything will be easy. And in fact, we know that's just not the case. It's Not to say that there's no hell or suffering. Jesus lists all the terrible things that would happen and continue to happen in this world. War and unrest, famine and disease. But to be afraid is to say essentially that God isn't really in charge. And that God is helpless to do anything about the bad things that happen in our world. And that's simply not what Catholics believe. And so our Savior says in verse 9... And when you hear of wars and insurrection, when you hear of these terrible things, do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. And I think this is important. Important because people are indeed afraid these days. They're afraid to go out after dark, not just in cities, but even in small towns now. They're afraid of disasters and violence. They're afraid of death. They're afraid of sickness and adversity. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid because life is hard right now and you're not quite sure how you'll get through? Or maybe you're afraid of getting older and more frail. Or maybe you're afraid for the church. Will the gates of hell prevail? What are you afraid of? To tell you the truth, I'm afraid a lot of the time. I can't help it sometimes, but I try not to be. I try to remember that God knows better than I do about the state of the world. 
And I trust that he'll carry me through when times are rough. And I try to trust that God the Holy Trinity is all-powerful and almighty and cares for me every single minute of every single day. And even though things will not be easy, he will care for me and see me through. I try to have faith in that. And I hope that you can trust in that too. Our Lord tells us, do not be afraid. And he tells us that over and over again. Do not be afraid, he says. Do not be afraid. All of these terrible things that happen in the world and in your life must take place. And only God knows why. Only God knows why terrible things happen. Now, that doesn't mean that we just stand idly by and condone war or encourage it. It doesn't mean that we ignore poverty or famine or unrest or disaster. It doesn't mean that we just look at uh, injustice and harm and ignore it where we find it. Not at all. But what it does mean is that we trust in God through thick and thin. Truly trust in Him. Because for some, it's easy to trust in God when things are going well. But can you trust in God when things are rough and dismal? Well, I think you can. And what's more, and this boggles my mind, our Lord tells us that it is in these very moments, these very moments when we're tempted into fear and darkness, these are the times that we ought to bear witness most diligently to the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. This is when we proclaim the good news, when disaster strikes. And why? Well, because people need to hear the gospel when things seem lost. Our Lord says in verse 13, this will be your opportunity to bear witness, and don't worry about what you're going to say. God himself will give you the words that you need to bear witness. And so that's really and truly quite remarkable when you, when you think of it. When you hear gloom and doom, that's your cue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And when you open the paper or turn on the internet and read terrible news, it's not time to despair. It's time to proclaim the good things that Christ promises to all who suffer. Do you remember the Beatitudes? Our Lord's sayings, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who hunger. Do you take them seriously? If you do then when we hear about famine, we are called to remind people that they are beloved of God and that they are blessed. And when we hear about persecuted people, we are called to let them know that they too are beloved of God and they are blessed. And when we hear about the least and the lost and the lowly, we are called to let them know that they are beloved of God and that they are blessed. And we hear that good news and we proclaim it. And then we help out where we can to ease suffering and hardship. I like what Pope Francis has to say on the subject. He says, first you pray for somebody who's hungry, and then you feed them. And that makes a lot of sense to me. People are afraid today. They're afraid for the church, even. And I can feel that, and I hear about that all the time, actually. (coughs) Division threatens our beloved Catholic Church, and there's us here at St. John's. We're afraid, too, sometimes. Anyway, will there be enough people here to worship on Sundays, enough to keep our doors open? Will people give enough of their time and talents and money? And what of the future? Will our church stand here in another hundred years? Well, my dear friends, I don't know the answer to those questions. But I know this. We're called in these difficult times. We're called to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that changes things for the better. And so proclaim that good news every single Sunday when you gather here at the foot of the altar. Proclaim it on your way home. Unroll the windows if you have to of the car. (laughs) Proclaim that good news. Proclaim it to your friends and to your family and to all those who you meet. Because Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ shall come again. And God is gracious, even today, even in a world of violence and unrest. So proclaim that good news and trust in a God that will reconcile all things unto himself. And now to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen.